lecture series under the auspices of the Foundation for Agrarian Studies. As uh, you explained in great detail, uh, this platform is supposed to, uh, to take the message of science and technology to uh, social scientists, the ordinary people and so on, to uh, sort of make it more, may I say, legible, more, more, more uh, accessible for the masses, uh, for the common people, and thus to expand the idea of scientific temper in the society as a whole. That is, uh, that is extremely important as uh, an objective uh, in these difficult times that we uh, live in. Uh, uh, may I uh, uh, express my happiness in being able to chair this session uh, where a very renowned agricultural scientist uh, is going to speak on. I'm very happy to introduce uh, Dr. S. Rajendra Prasad, who is uh, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of the University of Agricultural Sciences uh, in Bangalore. Uh, Professor uh, Rajinder Prasad uh, is uh, a scientist in the seed sector of agricultural science. Uh, he obtained his uh, master's degree uh, in seed technology from the College of Agriculture in Dharwad. He also later obtained a doctoral degree in 98 uh, in seed technology from uh, University of Agricultural Sciences, Bangalore. Uh, he started his career as a research assistant at the University of Agricultural Sciences, Bangalore, and he subsequently served with the National Seed Project, the N uh, NSP, uh, with great distinction for over 27 years in various capacities as a seed research officer, a special officer, and so on. Uh, his uh, significant contributions in uh, agricultural science and technology are, uh, uh, they include uh, the pre-sowing seed hydration treatment in plants like sunflower, uh, standardization of uh, synchronization techniques in uh, sunflower hybrids, uh, better pollen utilization and storage of pollen in crops like sunflower, uh, hybrid seed production technology in paddy, uh, standardization of screen sizes, drying methods, storage technologies, and seed testing uh, procedures. Uh, th these are some of the areas where he has made uh, significant uh, scientific contributions. Uh, he also, as uh, the special officer for seeds in the NSP, uh, made unique contributions in seed production by substantially uh, increasing the quantum of uh, quality seed production and the popularization of new hybrids and varieties by distributing quality seeds to the farming community. Uh, he also conceptualized and led uh, the uh, participatory model uh, for uh, seed production in crops like uh, paddy, sunflower, maize, etc. Uh, he's also a member of the Karnataka State Planning Commission and Foundation for Agrarian Studies is very happy to host uh, his uh, special lecture today uh, on, uh, the, uh, on the subject of uh, seeds in agricultural science and their importance. Uh, I, Professor Rajinder Prasad, uh, on behalf of the foundation and on my personal level, I warmly welcome you and thank you for agreeing uh, to give this uh, distinguished lecture. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I won't uh, stand between you and the audience. Uh, uh, I should uh, invite you now uh, to kindly take the stage. Uh, Professor Prasad will speak for roughly about 45 minutes or 50 minutes. Uh, after that, uh, we will have the Q&A session. Uh, there is a, there's a question box here, and I request uh, all of you to put your questions in. We will collate them and put them uh, uh, forward to uh, Dr. Prasad after the lecture is over. Thank you very much. And over to you, Professor Rajinder Prasad. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, so first of all, I would like to thank the you know, foundation for uh, agrarian studies uh, given me the opportunity to share my views regarding the application of seed science and uh, technology in agricultural productions so of course uh, though yesterday when i was talking to director he said the audience are uh, you know they are all uh, the social science people also there in that context probably i'll speak in general and i try to you know justify my talk so that uh, the people who are other than the seed science may catch up some of the uh, you know information on seeds and they will be motivated to go towards uh, seed sector from the agriculture in the agriculture so once again thank you very much for the foundations uh, for giving me the opportunity now i'm going to speak could you could you kindly share the screen sir? okay
Okay, so now, so straight away I'll go to the challenges what we are having. You know, if you look at our uh, the populations, most of the people who are participating here knows how our population is growing. And there is a predictions uh, by, you know, uh, maybe by 2050. So our populations will be around, uh, you know, 10 billion. So what should be the our target for the food production? It is around 70% percent more than what we are producing by the farmers. So now, so our challenge is the big challenges. Of course, so what are the resources, natural resources we have? Probably everybody knows every day, our, uh, the resources, especially the water and the lands is, you know, getting very, you know, so coming less. And again, the urbanizations making our land is, you know, very, a limited for the productions. With all that, we are target is to produce a huge quantity of uh, the food productions uh, to address the ever growing populations. So, if you look at the, you know, again the other aspects, what is the total uh, the food uh, chronic hunger they are facing? Almost eight hundred million people are there. So if you look at the further, 2 billion people are suffering from the micronutrient deficiencies. And again, if you look at the global investment on this agri-tech uh, since 2010 to 15, it is uh, very significant. And a lot of uh, the progress is has been made. Today, we have witnessed the this food production in the country itself around, we have touched 300 plus million tons. So this is the one graph I would like to share with the audience, uh, how the population growth is there in the developing countries when compared to the developed countries. That means almost in the developed countries, the growth of, of the populations is almost uh, stagnated. But if you look at the, you know, our Asian country and the, especially the developing countries, it is keep on growing. So then our challenge is to meet the food productions. So how we should reach these, you know, food productions, one of the slogans by our honorable prime minister, doubling the farmer income, in addition to the increase in the, you know, productions and the productivity, we also look at the farmer's income. So, and also diversity, conservations and sustainability. So this is another uh, the way, area where we should look into that. And food for all. So of course, if I look at the, you know, data and only few crops and the few varieties are contributing. So is there any scope for the diversifications in terms of increasing the food productions and also in terms of the nutritional security point of view? Then another challenges which we are facing now and uh, we are really experiencing by now we are seeing this month we are getting a lot of rains and in fact damaging most of our agriculture crops uh, because of flood, because of continuous rain, we are able to not able to take up the intercultural operations, and there is a lot of pests and diseases. All those things that means both biotic and abiotic stresses we are facing, and our job is to have the resilient cultivars, which uh, the you know universities, ICR institutes, and many private sectors are working on, and are the strong genetic base. So these are all the, you know, our challenges which we are working on. And if you look at the, you know, plant genetic resources are those the basic, uh, you know, basis for the food security and diversity is indirectly and support the livelihoods of every person on the earth. So now a lot of organizations that is the plant genetic resource for food and agriculture and which consists of, you know, diversity of seeds and the planting material for the traditional varieties as well as the modern cultivars for the crop, wild relatives and other wild plant species. So our, you know, if the conservation and sustainable use of this is very much essential to ensure our crop production and meeting the growing environmental challenges and the climate change. So again, this erosion of this is will be a, a big threat for us. Uh, especially on the food security in the long term. So this is one uh, thing which I would like to share with you. You see, this is the availability of uh, Indian crop diversity. 
so here if you look at the few crops or few species you see for instance uh, the plant species used for food is hardly 272 and uh, 3% 3 is around 60% of the calorie for the human diet only among three species like you know rice wheat and some pulses so this is the thing so here my our uh, you know vision and this one is to make use of this uh, biodiversity and you have to address not only the food productions in also the the nutritional aspects so here when we talk about the nutritional aspects as i said in the first uh, you know slide uh, so what are the deficiency which we are noticed that is like a protein some amino acids and vitamins minerals so these are all the things which really increase the susceptibility for the various uh, diseases so again, it leads to the significant loss in the total gross domestic you know, product, which is as high in 11% in Asia and African countries. So our university is trying to work in this direction also initiated some experiments and our breeders have developed some varieties in case of rice, which are rich in zinc and iron and the protein, which the Nutrients can be achieved ranging from 13 to 37 percent depending upon the kind of nutrient. So what I wanted to say here at this point, even the ICR has started working in almost 70 varieties have been, you know, already developed in this biofortified varieties which are going to supplement various nutrients including the micronutrients. So here how the seed is going to play an important role with respect to the seed security. So first here, when we talk about the seed, when I was the director of the Indian you know, Institute of Seed Research, so we have also given a lot of importance to the protection of our traditional varieties and how to conserve and also make them available to the people. Still, there are a lot of areas where they are largely cultivating these varieties it is not only serving as the genetic resources at the same time it is, is being used in many parts of our country that was the one of the objective wherein we have established around 60 center under the icr and under the network project we could be able to conserve these and supply these kind of material now again to ensure the seed security we should have the robust seed production and supply system of course India is having a strong seed you know, uh, system in the you know, country and compared to any other country in the global. Then we have also supported by the national policies and the regional policies also. Now probably you are saying there is one more uh, new seed act has been you know, placed before the parliament. It is uh, about to you know, going for the approval. A lot of provisions and uh, has been made in this so that we can ensure the seed security. Then the most important thing is the timely availability of the quality seeds uh, to the farmers, because you know the farmers need, can't wait for the availability of the seeds. They, because most of our more than sixty percent of our farmers depends on the rain. That is, uh, you know, the rain-fed uh, cultivations. Therefore, it should be always readily available. And the most important thing is the affordable price. And this is the one thing because you know, if you look at the cost of seeds of the various hybrids and everything, even some people may not be able to afford such kind of things. Under that situation, what should be our, you know, uh, the kind of action to so that these people also should everybody should get the seeds at the reasonable prices and the efficient distributions. If you look at our uh, today's uh, seed replacement rate. In some crops, of course, in hybrid, it is uh, quite satisfactory, 100%. In some of the self-pollinated crops, it is around, you know, 36 to 37%. And in some of the cross-pollinated crops, it is around 55 to 60%. So therefore, in order to ensure the seed replacement rate and also the one more varietal replacement rate, so our distribution system should be very efficient. So here, when we say seed, it is uh, distinguished by their multifunctionality. So one is the when it comes to the subject to the business and the trade policies, it has the commodity that can be traded and may carry many harmful organisms also because we have experienced many of these you know weeds and also some of the pests 
have come along with this. Then when come to the subject of the policy focusing, and yes, when it is seeds, there will be a lot of attraction of the intellectual property rights and traditional knowledge. So that is distributions among the community. Then the tool for a technology transfer. You see, always when we talk about the cultivations or the increasing the productivity, we talk, uh, if you have the quality seeds, I think uh, more than 25 to 30% of the farmers, you know, uh, the risk is going to be reduced. In addition to the quality seeds, which is contributing almost 15 to 20% increase in the yield, the, which carries other active the, the byproducts, maybe insecticide, fungicides, or bio agents, which also adds so that there will be a efficient utilization of the resources uh, which is available in the soil for the effective growth. So this is one. Uh, though, uh, uh, this tool play an important role in the transfer of the many technologies. So again, I always say, as I use this slide, there is a strong relationship between, that is a positive relationship between the increasing the food productions as well as the seed productions. If you look up after 50, you know, in the years, how the 50 million tons today, 305 million tons. So because we say most of this happens because of uh, the availability of the quality seeds to the maximum people. This is one thing which we have noticed by looking at this graph, how it has increased after uh, you know 2010 onwards. So now the quantum of quality seeds available is you know uh, to the farmers almost to the tune of uh, 350 you know lakh tons quintals. This is roughly. Uh, with respect to the you know field crops and also some major the vegetable crops so always we take the talk uh, say when the honorable prime minister say per drop more yield so say therefore i also quote this per seed more yield so that way seed is going to contribute as far as the the way productivity and also production is concerned so again, what is the status of the value when it comes to the export in the Indian scenario? So in case of the vegetable crops, so we have almost Asia, we are exporting about 57%, Europe about 23%, and North America 12%, and Africa about 6%. Among, among the ASEAN countries, the market top export uh, distinction, distinctions, that is a value for India, so the major is the Philippines and Indonesia, Nepal, and other countries. So if you look at the field crops as such, the Asian countries are the maximum contributors, and America and Africa and the Euro. If you look at the SAR countries, so our value is more in case of Bangladesh, followed by Thailand, Pakistan, and other things. So this is the data which was uh, you know, published in 2016. Why I'm presenting, there is a huge scope for the export of our seeds, especially the vegetable seeds and some of the you know, field crop seeds, especially the scented rice uh, uh, from the field uh, crops. In fact, we from the University of Agriculture Sciences, we have exporting uh, these you know, sunflower hybrids uh, you know, to the, uh, the African countries like Uganda. So then if you look at the why our uh, you know seeds have been demanded and uh, going export in a huge scale because the quality is the one of the important factor playing. So our Indian system, as I mentioned, it's our Indian seed industry is a vibrant industry wherein uh, we have the strong quality assurance system starting from the Department of Agriculture and Corporations from the government of India. This is the one which is going to manage uh, what should be the basic seed which is required for the further multiplication of the subsequent seeds? As uh, I think uh, most of the participant knows, see, we have the four generation system in the seed. That is the breeder seed, which is the one of the basic seeds, which is produced by the nucleus seeds. This is uh, totally controlled by the breeder himself. All the he will be monitoring the quality aspects. So, which is uh, essential for the productions of the foundation seed. So these foundation seeds, the breeder seeds will be produced by the organizing, the breeder who is produced or the organization who developed the variety, they are going to produce these breeder seeds and they are the one who is going to give the certificate about the quality. Almost 100% genetic purity should be there in the breeder seeds. 
Subsequently, the foundation seeds, certified seeds. These foundation seeds normally produced by the public sector organizations like National Seed Corporation, State Seed Corporations, and also some of the ICR institutes and SAUs. And even the public sector uh, is also undertaking in the private sectors and even NGOs. Now we are promoting the farmer producer organizations to produce these generation seeds so that we should produce in a huge quantity so that uh, our seed replacement rate can also be enhanced. Here we to control this, uh, see what is the mechanism, probably in some of the parts in may ask, what is the mechanism to ensure the quality of the seeds. Yes, we have the minimum seed certification standards. As per the Seed Act 1966, we have all these parameters uh, to certify, wherein the quality control, the state certification, seed certification agencies are there, about 22, they will take care of this one. And to test the quality of the seeds, there are about 122 seed testing laboratories are available in the country. These are all notified laboratories. Of course, there are so many laboratories which are run by the private sector. Even the international quality assurance systems are also there. Uh, but as far as the certification is concerned, these are all the eligible and uh, notified under the Gazette. So here, anybody can take up the seed production, but only thing they have to ensure the quality of the seeds. There is one more class of seeds called truthfully labeled seeds, wherein the people, those who are not notified under the Gazette, uh, as per the government uh, you know, regulations, it is not eligible for the produce uh, as a certified seeds. Under that category, the some of the private sector people and also even the public sector people, they in the initially, they will produce as a truthfully labeled seeds but here, the only difference between the truthfully labeled seeds and the, the certified seeds is only it is certified by the recognized agency. And in case of truthfully labeled seeds, it is, uh, you know, uh, the, variety, the quality will be assured by the producer who produces the anything happens, the producer is held responsible for that. So, but as far as the quality attributes are concerned, it should be as specified in the minimum seed certification standard. This is the system is there in the country as far as the seed productions and the quality the control system is concerned. Then there is a one more community seed bank. Of course, the foundation has done a lot of work on this. And we from the university, we are also promoting this you know, community seed bank. Otherwise, it is called a seed village concept here. Whatever the varieties, you see, we will collect the indent from the particular, you know, group or the cluster. What is the kind of variety you need? Then we will organize, maybe through the a group of farmers or through the FUOs. We try to identify the youth, especially who are having a very good knowledge about the agriculture, and we'll supply the basic seed material, and we will train them at the three stages of their productions and we try to produce the seed and uh, see that these community seed bank you know will be supported and get the production of the all the kinds of seeds it is not only the seeds which have been developed from my or university whatever the variety even the local varieties which are in need that also being done so here there are different organizations have been involved in, in this community seed bank we from the government organizations uh, we will try to you know, uh, make it like a consortium mode and we'll ask, for instance, this seed certification agency, we'll ask them to certify. In case of uh, the state seed corporation, we'll ask them to buy. So that way we try to, you know, help this community to produce a huge quantity of seeds with a lot of human resources. That is how we will cater the needs of some of the local varieties which are required in the a particular uh, the segments. So again, farmers producer are being recently the government of India and the state government are we you know they are promoting and uh, you know for the uh, these organization for various aspects. So now we are taking these people as the seed producers. So we are we are just giving them as a we will take them as a mentor. We'll adopt them. We will try to give them a basic seed material and we will be monitoring from zero. That means from the data of the you know, selection of the crops and variety source of seeds, 
till it is packed and also to the distributions. So that is how we are trying. It is not only the one, even also we are promoting some of the self-help groups. So depending upon the need, we are you know, promoting these seed productions. We also call these productions as a participate, farmers participatory seed productions program. So here, this is the strategy which I would like to mention here. I mentioned in the beginning, see there are two mantras in the seed sector. One is the seed replacement rate and the second one is the varietal replacement rate. Because if you look at the varietal replacement rate, it is very less when compared to the seed replacement rate. So probably the people will say, no, sir, we are not getting this suitable, you know, substitute variety, which is going on doing well in the system. Yes, there are, but only thing sometimes getting the new variety is a problem. So therefore what we are doing is, so we are doing this, as I mentioned, the participatory through, that is the one program which we are promoting this varietal replacement. And also uh, we are also, we have the KVKs, Krishi Vignana Kendras, where we try to put all these new varieties, uh, you know, in the demonstrations with along with the Czech varieties. And regularly we will have the melas and the field demonstrations uh, so that uh, the farmers will be educated about the new varieties and the things. Yesterday I was there in almost all our KVKs, all over uh, the agriculture research stations, we try to promote uh, this kind of activity so that the spread of the varieties or the hybrid is very fast. As a result, uh, there will be increase in the seed replacement rate, so which increase in, in, in terms increase the total, uh, you know, uh, the productivity and the productions of the farmers. So this is the one of the, you know, just I've given in the figure, what is the status of the seed replacement rate? If you look at this, the most of the cereals, we are happy because government of India has already fixed at least 36% of the cell pollinated crops should be the, you know, we have to reach the target and we have reached more than that in some crops and in the hybrids around 50%. Uh, sorry, and the grass pollinated crops, it is 50%. And in case of the hybrid, it is 100%. Of course, we are telling, except in case of uh, the oil seeds, uh, we are happy with the kind of uh, seed replacement rate which is going on now today. So this is advanced technology because why this I'm not going to touch much because earlier I thought uh, there will be hours to the you know industry people. So then now there are the Professor Prasad, I'm sorry to interfere, but I think I think the people will be interested in this also. So okay. don't. Uh, uh, okay, then, not, then, uh, then I'll explain, sir. Then I'll yeah, explain. please, please do, please do. Yeah, yeah. Sir, here uh, we have the advanced uh, technologies like the uh, marker assistant and also this uh, genomic, all the protein, all kind of uh, the advanced tools we are uh, going here. So here there are two things. One, uh, you see, genetics to improve the quality of the seeds, especially some of the traits. Like you know, in case of when we talk about the seeds, we concentrate on the germinability, vigor and also the dormancy. Some of the crops will have a, create a lot of dormancy. So these problems we try to, as a seed technology point of view, I am telling. So we try to address using these technology, biochemical markers and technology. This is one aspect. The second aspect, so you see, we are going for the testing of the quality, that is genetic purity, uh, by using the grow out test. It is a traditional and also it is approved by the you know, kind of uh, the, the government of India regulations uh, to issue the certificate. But uh, now it consumes a lot of time. Say, for example, each crop, say sunflower, we want to say whether it's genetically pure, we have to grow at least about 45 uh, you know, days till it is uh, give the flowering and express its original character. But here we are using the markers, uh, PCR-based markers. Uh, now we are going for the SSR markers. Uh, wherein we could be able to identify the genetic purity and also hybridity of the varieties uh, or the hybrids uh, within about you know one day within 24 hours we could be able to get the result this tool we are using for the internal you know quality assurance system so this is what uh, we are uh, doing and of course most of the these tools we are using for the breeding purposes so just tissue culture, just I would like to hand here. 
This is the one it is in case of the, you know, vegetatively propagated plants. Of course, in banana, they are using just I wanted to give an example. And another one, gene editing. So here uh, we are looking for the different character gene where, uh, especially on the disease resistance, especially for the, you know, the seed borne disease. Because why we are talking, when we talk about the seed certification standard, there are some designated diseases. So to avoid those things, this technology we are using, gene editing technology, and also for the abiotic stresses. So we use this uh, technology and improved yield. Of course, uh, certain cases we are also going for this. To address these traits, we are going for the gene editing. Our teams are working. So it will. So there is a actually uh, one of the reference they quoted about uh, the, you know if 60 to 100 million farms adopt gene edited seeds by 2030. So our production will increase by almost 100 to 400 million tons. This is what uh, their predictions. I think they are going to achieve it. So again, just I would like to give an example how this PPD, if, you know, uh, led uh, successful some of the programs. So this is one example where uh, affordable, accessible, this Asian drought tolerance varieties. This is the, one of the program adopted by the CIMET foundations wherein they could reach the farmer uh, with their, you know, the choice of the material within no time. So this is the one technology we use, not only promote the, you know, varieties which are for a particular, uh, the traits, at all the same time, we also take the support of the seed producers. You see, for instance, we I, I wanted to share my experience. Northeast, uh, there was no, uh, no formal seed system uh, uh, with respect to the some of the crops, what we did, uh, so we made uh, the you know oh, the seed system for the north uh, the states alone, wherein we brought so many, many private companies and also these national seed corporations. We have made it as a consortia so that uh, the people who have developed the variety, because most of the varieties which are developed from Almora were suitable for this region. We took the Almora uh, the variety, especially in case of maize. We try to give in a cluster and a group, and we try to produce. So that has really worked well. And uh, within two, three years, uh, we could able to percolate uh, our varieties, which we would like to promote for those region, which was very much uh, you know, adopted. So this is how the, some of the examples we are trying to give. Of course, this is one of the international wheat shield partnership. Again, here also. Uh, the you know the increasing the genetic yield potential of wheat by 50% by 2035 globally by generating the novel genetic resources and the technical means to achieve this through the PPP mode. These are all the uh, you know agencies which really made and just I'm giving an example this how we can really take this in the seed system. So again, this is uh, one of the stress tolerance uh, in Africa and of South Asia that is uh, strata begin in the end of this, you know, 2007, I was there in the, that region. I was also participant in the Northern, you know, not the Eastern uh, Uttar Pradesh. I was there. Uh, there also we tried to promote uh, this, you know, new varieties. In fact, our uh, hybrid uh, rice, one variety, KRH2, which was not for farming uh, better in the sense because of some aroma, the people have preferred in the Eastern UP and Bihar part. And, uh, we try to promote through this participatory and it has spread like anything. Today also uh, that variety is doing well. So these are all the some of the strategy to promote our varieties and our uh, seeds we have done. So again, the come to the latest, uh, the trend which is going, as I uh, mentioned, uh, the soil is the, in the sense the area of, for the cultivation, it is shrinking. So then we have to go for the vertical. So this is the one project which was uh, taken by me. My students started working on this, uh, this one, hydrophonics. Because uh, the seed production of tomato, uh, we are finding some uh, difficulties because the people used to complain, sir, the people are the, you know, stealing our uh, parental materials and other things, isolation, so many problems. Sir. Then we thought, can we go for this hydrophonic system wherein we can develop the 
a technology by which we can produce the seeds. I really, I'm happy to mention here, my students, my PhD students work here and she compared the traditional way of doing the seed production, aerophonics and also hydrophonics. And really she got a very good results, not only in terms of yield and also in terms of the quality. And also in terms of, you know, saving this in uh, the, our material because it can be done within now. So now because of this success story, now we got one more project wherein we are trying to working out the SOPs for the hybrid seed, uh, you know, seed production of different crops under this hydrophonic system. And that we would like to commercially, we would like to go for the commercial productions also next to that by involving the private companies or the farmers. So this is one project that we are promoting. It is really a success story of our uh, student work and it is doing well. And always uh, now I would like to promote this technology not only for the seed production. In fact, uh, we are going to have a demo of this kind of uh, the hydrophonics technology in our Kushimala, which is going to be held on 11th, 12th, 14th, till 14th in November, uh, wherein uh, we are inviting a lot of uh, private people also to showcase this technology uh, to further enhance our, especially the vegetable production uh, in the country. So the, again, the ma smart materials. So here you could see we are using a lot of material for the packaging of the seeds and other things. So we are, we are trying to use some of the material which is biodegradable because some of the plastic which is in the market there is a lot of threat for this, you know, it is causing a lot of uh, the pollutions. So now these are all the products used for the food products. At the same time, we started working on this bio-based plastic packing material for the seeds uh, based on the requirement per acre and also uh, the per acre basis. And also uh, the antimicrobial films also we are using so that we can protect the seeds for a longer time. And also some of the bio-based sensor in the sense that we are going to ensure the quality for a particular period that is called the validity period. So the moment it starts deteriorating and it gives us an indication, yes, this is going to lose the germinations or the vigor. So we have to use immediately or we have to take some precautions to ensure uh, that uh, to prolong this, you know, vigor and viability some more time by treating or uh, going for some other means of techniques. So this is what uh, we started using, especially for the high value, uh, low volume seeds. And again, synthetic biology, of course, here, you know, this is in collaboration with the different departments, multi, you know, genetics, chemistry and engineering, and also computer science. So we are going for these applications in, and also benefit the, uh, to the agriculture. Here, this is, you know, of course, it is being used for the general thing, but we are trying to adopt this technology for the seed production system and in the seed production change. So again, nanomaterials, of course, uh, the fertilizers, the IFCO has started the giving the nano fertilizer, nano urea. So like that, uh, so a lot of pesticides and also these animal management products and also the food safety, these things have come to the market and we would like to adopt this technology in the you know, seed production system. So we talk about the robotics. Nowadays, the people, many engineers and also every day, almost alternate days, the engineers are coming and meeting us. So can we use of robotics, drones and sensors in the agriculture? Yes, many people are working with us. So now for the robotics, we are looking for the harvesting, especially in the intercultivation, that is weed control, and also phenotyping of the things that is sorting and packing. So these are all the things already used in uh, many of country, but we would like to use this, especially in case of uh, this, you know, uh, automatic uh, evaluation. See, in the country, what we are doing, uh, we are going for the manual certifications wherein the each inspector has to physically go for the inspection of the entire field but physically even if you work for 24 hours the area which is being allotted to him may not be possible so in that case what we are suggesting we are also working 
can we use some robotics or the you know some kind of uh, the drones which can survey the seed production plant uh, physically it should go and individually it has to be there so we will develop the software by putting the true character of the crops or the variety so that it can detect the off types or any disease things so can we do that so that is how uh, we are uh, already have a some program with the in our uh, you know some microsoft companies and we are working so this technology we would like to have then again to the pollination drones see now in case of some of the hybrids especially the cross pollinated crops the pollination is a must the crops like sunflower so it's a must in that case we are always looking for the keeping the behinds and other things sometimes it may not survive so can we think of these drones or the type of uh, the robotic type of the pollinators which can do the job of the natural pollinators so this is one area where we can think then the determination of compositions and the quality of food so this is in general this is uh, regarding this one we are using the sensor for the quality of the seeds so that's what uh, we have already tried but it's not giving the true picture of the this one it needs a lot of uh, the further uh, expansion in with respect to the research in those areas but we have started using those things only to indicates the whether it is good for the germinate in the sowing or not these are all the things we are using uh, but it is not that much effective but we need uh, some work in this direction sir so demand driven innovations in the this one i was talking about the varietal replacement so when we are talking about it still there is one sorghum variety called you know maldandi it is uh, no variety has been replaced even we claim that it has been replaced with uh, that substitute are available but the farmers preference is still it is for them so like that there are so many the varieties are there but uh, we are in the seed production change or seed multiplication change we try to protect and see that it should be in the concern it is not only from the point of the you know uh, consumption point of the roti it is also from the point of the fodder values so this is telematics of course uh, on the transfer of the data and sitting at the single place can we you know manage our seed production programs in the a big area maybe 100 acres 30 acres that is the one idea we have moved at this is the future thinking what we would like to have this telematics in the seed production system so again digital farming systems here uh, about you know now the digitalization of course you have seen how the digitalization we have developed one package of practices where the farmers can you know if they send a message sir we need a package of practices for the paddy so immediately we are sending them a pdf format so this is what the package of practices uh, for a particular crop so that is how even we have uh, maybe around 500 pages package of practices for all the crops that also we are giving so like that this digital you know farming uh, by using the data can be used for our seed production the most important for the things which we expect from this one is the predictions that is uh, uh, the predictions of the weather by which we can give the you know indications see for example now we are going to get a two three days rains in that case we will ask that uh, the farmers not to take up the harvest especially the seed crops so that we can preserve i uh, minimize the loss this is one thing which we are and also pest and diseases now we have project wherein we try to real time uh, you know advisories we are giving in the sense in another 2 3 days this is the climate and these are all the incidences may be more so kindly take care so this is how we are going to save almost uh, 25% of the losses can be made by this kind of uh, the informations uh, advancing to the farmers so here these are all the some of the you know companies already so working on this areas that is agricultural extension technology of transfer risk management of the and also crop production forecasting environmental land use 
you know, monitoring. So these are all the things just I'm giving in information. So this is one which we also using uh, see extension methods. So how we can transfer the information, the technology to the farmers. This was uh, done by the, you know, ICRISAT and also we also this uh, information and communication technologies, how it really helps to transfer our technology. So now we are sending the informations as a app based uh, and also some of the through the, you know, Kisan calls so many, you know, technologies so really it is working well and it is also more cheaper when compared to the other mode of things. So evaluation of uh, this is the one thing just of course this is uh, not required here. So again other uh, uh, the latest blockchain uh, technology in the you know system. So of course uh, the blockchain technology this uh, the no distributed ledger technology behind the Bitcoin and other uh, uh, cryptocurrencies allows for highly secure digital transformations and the recording keeping here in the seed system what is happening see there are 100 lots are there so when we distribute the seed material so there will be some complaints from one or two lots and they started asking the compensations and other things so in order to trace back and uh, to identify so this uh, this kind of uh, technology is really help us and there will be a traceability this is also one of the things you know in the new seed act where the new seed policy which uh, act has been placed in the our uh, you know parliament it is also one of the traceability every event of the production system starting from sowing till it is reaches the farmers uh, traceability should be there so i think this kind of smart technology will be helping us uh, to trace the main uh, the you know production activities then this is one thing which i already mentioned about how this you know the world bank uh, really helping us we are using the big data and artificial intelligence and machine learning these are all the new areas where we would like to take up in our system and uh, just for the information of the audience just i would like to place it and these marketing set this is one area where we are really facing the problem uh, with respect to the marketing and also access for the things so here we have made one project that is seed platform for all seed business wherein this platform will create uh, the you know platform for all the stakeholders starting from seed producer retailers then uh, the seed consumers technical input providers uh, this is not only for the public sector it is for the private and also all the NGOs, anybody who is dealing with the seeds, they can become the partners in that. Here, even the technical information, if they need, they can get. And the seeds, which are their choice, where it is available, how it is available, and what is the cost that is information available. In case any distribution or any dis, uh, you know, uh, the complaints, that also can be resolved under this pro the platform. So that way we have created this platform uh, so to cater the needs of all the agriculturists wherein even if they purchase one particular uh, variety they will get what is the package of practices how to grow it or what kind of treatment they have to give what is the probable diseases uh, the crops usually get and how to address those this kind of uh, informations we have made under this platform so this is, uh, we also made uh, one app called Bijada, where you can access uh, about, you know, all the seed dealers, companies, both private companies, public sector companies, dealers, and the farmers who are producing the seeds, and also the package of practices of each crop, and also community seed banks, which are operating now. Then advanced seed technologies, as I mentioned, maybe so some seed treatments, uh, some bioagent treatment, so some kind of uh, film coating, all those things will be there. And also service links. <coughs> In order to test the kind of uh, the seed, they can go for this website and uh, there they will get what kind of services they are getting. So that way we have made this uh, up and it is user-friendly 
and this can be registered by the you know anybody maybe farmer maybe ngo anybody by paying the nominal charges so this is the map of uh, technologies and the maturity so produce differently using the new technology as i mentioned this hydrophonics then use of bioplastics and uh, we can go for the vertical and urban gardening drone technology data analytics so these are all the things which we would like to you know inc incorporate in our seed system and we are uh, we partly doing it so this is uh, thank you so much and uh, i expect a lot of questions uh, uh, because uh, i i yesterday i changed my slides in a different way because of uh, uh, after the discussions otherwise i was giving all seed scenario so anyhow uh, so open for the discussion sir you can ask any questions and we there thank you very much uh, professor rajendra prasad uh, for that uh, lecture which basically laid out uh, the different uh, new possibilities that have arisen in yes. uh, the area of seed research uh, uh, including in uh, including in seed distribution uh, marketing etc this it was a very uh, very useful uh, overview of the sector that you provided may I, may I also say a forward looking uh, overview Uh, that you provided thank you very much uh, for that uh, one of the uh, one of the set of questions that are that uh, our audience may have uh, allow me to sort of uh, engage you uh, on a few of those questions yeah uh, uh, there are a lot of people in the audience appear to be interested in knowing how the seed sector has and seed research has evolved over the years in the sense okay. Okay. Uh, from the green revolution time or maybe okay. even before uh, via green revolution where how has it reached where it is today okay, okay. so that's one part so uh, for the first question i would like to put to you uh, please take your time in answering it uh, which is that how do you think essentially uh, the research into seeds has changed uh, mm -hmm. from uh, the traditional uh way in which uh, farmers basically used to select seeds for adaptation yeah. uh, and compared to in the post green revolution period you saw uh, the very idea of seed improvement uh, shifted from the farmers field to the scientists right okay. so and from there we are in a more advanced uh, era now so how do you how do you characterize this whole evolution of the sector itself okay excellent excellent actually Uh, I, i didn't uh, you know touch what uh, the history of this one if you look at the how the seed uh, the promotion started uh, probably you remember thara development corporation it was you know in up uh, so there is a called you know, panthnagar university there was a huge land was there at that time what they did uh, in addition to the development of the things they started the technology to produce the seeds there they started by producing the certified seeds and available to the farmer this was the started so because of this was the funding from the world bank as a result they could see the success of this because the farmer started producing the quality seeds here the thara development corporations provided the basic seeds and also the technology how to produce the seeds so once it was then and even the certification process also started so after seeing the success the people thought that why can't we expand this one then the the national seed project funded by the world bank they are given the second phase wherein they have identified many such organizations and started developing by you know developments in the three things one is you know first is the land development for the seed production activity the second component was the breeder seed productions and the third core component was the seed technology research so this was started way back in 1975 so at that time about 30 centers they have identified based on the success story of the thai development corporations wherever there is a demand for the seeds for instance you know up needs some kind of particular wheat varieties so who has the developed that varieties that institutions is going to produce the breeder seeds so that seeds will be available to these organizations at the time they have established a state seed corporations also so these corporations are going to buy this material they by based on the intent so they started producing the foundation and the certified seeds so again in between 1963 
National Seed Corporation was established. Why it was established after seeing this success story in the Tara Development Corporation? So there should be some agency to certify the quality of the seeds. The mechanism has to be somebody has to supervise. At the time, the NSC was made responsible to you know, produce the foundation seeds. At the same time, they have to ensure the quality of the seeds produced by the different organizations. So this is how it took place. So that time, see many of the organizations started producing the breeder seeds. So that was the basis. Then this generation system started. So again, 1974 onwards, so what this again in the third phase, the World Bank under the NSB, they wanted to establish the seed certification agencies, which can cater the needs of quality assurance in the respective states. So that is how there were 22 state seed certification agencies are there. So that will take care of the certification of this one. So this is how it was done. Again, when you talk about the research, so seed technology research is the one part. So way back in 1958, All India Coordinated Research Projects on different crops have been started. So that was first, it was started on sorghum, then the maize. So then they started giving the hybrids and the varieties. So these ECRI projects started giving the varieties and the hybrids. Then who has to multiply? Who has to take care? At that time, these are all the organizations took the birth. And the whatever the material has been developed by these ECRI projects under different centers, maybe that centers are located almost across the country, depending upon the geographical nature and the crops which is demanded. And they have started developing. And these varieties started entering into the seed multiplication chain. And this is how <coughs> the seed system started. Sir. This is the history how it has been done. Right. Thank in fact, you. Thank this you. is with respect to the public sector. Yeah. But with respect to the private sector, one uh, seed, uh, the private sector, Satan seeds, uh, this was started way back in 1895 itself. It was started in Kolkata. The small scale, they started the seed productions of the vegetables. That was the birth for the vegetables. Now you know the situations of the vegetable seed industry. Now most of the private, uh, almost all, the private sister, the sector has dominated. 90% of the vegetable seed productions is being organized, taken by the private agencies. Of course, uh, our institutions are also there like AHR and uh, vegetable research institutions at uh, Varanasi. These institutions are also developing the variety, but uh, the large scale productions will be through participatory. Uh, thank you very much. The other important question that might arise here uh, is with respect to uh, how whether uh, uh, the development of new seed varieties and hybrids yeah. over a period of time uh, yeah. lead by the selection process lead yeah. to an extinction of yeah. what people call as traditional seeds. Yes. Right? So uh, I mean, a lot of people raise concerns about uh, new seeds completely replacing old ones and hence uh, uh, the the what people call as the authentic traditional seeds are yes. lost. Right? Yes. So yes. how do you, as a seed technologist, how would you address this concern that is yeah. often raised, which is often a criticism against uh, uh, against modern seed modern seed science and research? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Actually, we should not forget our uh, traditional varieties and traditional uh, you know history because that is the source for development of further you know whatever the technology or the new varieties we are developing. All the strong base is uh, that tree, the traditional varieties, for which uh, what we have done under the system, ICR system also there, even our system also there, where we have the ICR seed project, where in all these traditional varieties, which are there in the seed multiplication chain, and which is also act as a basis for our further research program, that is being conserved and uh, making them available to the farmers for the regular cultivation also and also preserving them. So here, wherever these patches are there, traditional varieties are still, it is in the demand, it is a continuous cultivation. There we have established the centers where they were going to conserve and also multiply and distribute. This is a system we are still evolving. 
by using this data, the material we are developing in terms of breeding program. For instance, uh, I quote an example of uh, this Maldendi variety. Though we have done a lot of exercise, a lot of people claims that we have a good replacement variety, but still the people of those areas, Northern Karnataka, they prefer that one only. So that way we have not break the chain of that multiplication. Still it is there, we are preserving it. And this is one example. The other one example, TMB2 in case of groundnut. These people, you know, there are so many varieties have come, but still some of the patches, more than 60%, still they're asking the same TMB2. So still that variety also we are trying to maintain in our schemes and also respective directorate so that that materially it is if not available for the larger multiplication it should be available for further improvement of the varieties so this is how we are maintaining a related question that usually comes up is uh, with regard to the relative uh, uh, success of what we call as in situ and ex situ modes of conserving old seed varieties yeah. there is some research which shows that uh, that ex situ preservation that is yeah, in yeah. gene bank, seed bank, yeah, and so on, yeah, yeah. may actually be more uh, more efficient uh, yeah. than in situ methods uh, because uh, you can preserve high germination rates and so on exactly. uh, in, in ex situ. Can you yeah. can you tell our audience a little bit about uh, uh, because a lot of people appear to argue that okay. in situ methods are better than ex situ, while well, research shows otherwise. Uh, no, can no, you no. please throw some light on this? Yeah, yeah. Actually, let me for the audience, sir, one second. Uh, in just to explain the term, in yeah. situ primarily means you preserve an, a traditional variety in the farmer's field itself by cultivating yes, yes. it again and again. Yes, but yes. ex situ is an external thing. That is, you you store the seed in a seed bank uh, yes. and then preserve it over a long period of time. Over to you, sir. Sir, thank you. This is a very good question. Actually, for conservation of things, we use the different methods. It's in situ, ex situ, all those method uh, cryopreservations and all those things we use. But here, the what is the nature of crop which we it is? That is the most important thing. For instance, for instance, for instance, if the crop it is very sensitive, we cannot keep on you know produce every year. In that case, what we do, we produce once in a while, maybe three years or four years, and we preserve in the ex situ by taking all the precautions so that it can preserve for the long time. There are some crop varieties which can be, you know, you can use regularly and comes up very well. So that crop, it is a very hardy crop. Sir. Such crops we go for the in-situ. So this is how we- What would be the exam crop. some examples of that, so those crops? Uh, uh, for, for, instance, uh, for, a, for instance, some crops, you know, our, uh, some rice varieties, uh, which are very traditional varieties in case of Odisha where we have, so here, some traditional varieties, what we are doing it, we produce three years, four years once and preserve for them. And we try to revive them uh, by, you know, in situ after keeping them the ex situ. So there are, there are some varieties, you know, normally we can grow that we can every year we can grow. But uh, in addition to this, this ex situ method is being followed for preserve almost all the crops. For instance, if there is any damage in the in situ because of the flood, because of the drought, so we may lose the crop. In that case, for any safety measures, we keep them. Yet there are two things we use in when we use it in the ex situ. We, we can store, conserve for the short term, long term, and the medium term. If the material is very precious and other things, we keep it for the long term, wherein we can regulate the temperature and the moisture of those containers so that it can serve. Always we keep for the long term, the moisture content of the seeds is very low. So, and the environment where we use should have the less relative humidity in the chamber so that we can, you know, preserve for the long time. If it is a medium term, so we reduce the temperature to some extent and preserve. So this is how we follow. In addition to that, we also use some of the chemicals like, you know, say silica gel and all those materials also we use. So these kind of uh, the, the methods we use for the conservation of our traditional material uh, based on the nature of the crops. For instance, some of the all seed crops, uh, their storability is very poor. In that case, what should be our time? So we can store for the medium and we, uh, we go for the 
every three years or two years multiply and give them. So this is how we take the decision based on the nature of crops. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Prasad. That's a very useful explanation because there is often a tendency for people to think that ex situ is bad and in situ no, is no, good. No, no, no. Nothing is bad. Only the situations and the nature That's of right. crops we have to decide. That, absolutely. Science has to decide which is yes, more yes, appropriate. Yes, That's yes. simple. Yeah. Uh, the other uh, very common question that is raised, uh, Professor Prasad, is with, with respect to the point about seed replacement rates that you yeah, made yeah. in your lecture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, some people have this, uh, some have this concern uh, I mean, I've read it in different uh, places where people write about this, that uh, uh, focusing on seed replacement rate uh, actually uh, is taking away the right of the farmer to save and sow his own or her own seeds. Uh, is that a concern in the sense or uh, is it, uh, I mean, is seed replacement rate, which increases yields by 20 to 30 percent, as you correctly said, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, is to be, is it to be set aside and uh, is how we to create space for uh, uh, more of saving seeds and sowing, which is, uh, which is a more appropriate scientific uh, explanation yeah. for this? Yeah, it is true. Actually, what we are saying for the self-pollinated crops, uh, we are recommending uh, at least three to four, after three, four generations, they go for the replacement. We are not saying every year you have to keep on replacing this variety. See, now what we do, when we give the quality seeds to the farmer, we follow the generation system. That is breeder, foundation, certified seeds. So once certified seeds is being used by the farmer, if it is highly self-pollinated crop, then you can preserve, conserve, and use it for another two to three years. Why we are telling? Because when the farmers are conserving themselves, in case if they are neglect about, you know, sometimes there may be a mechanical mixture, sometimes there may be some natural crossing may occur. So unforeseen situations may damage the quality of the seeds in terms of genetics. Therefore, what we recommend, I, I can understand that many people are doing following no problem. Only thing you restrict those uh, producing themselves for the self-pollinated crop for two to three generations, that is enough, not behind that. Again, you replace with the new seeds and be comfortable, you can harvest the better things. That is what we would like to suggest. But in case of cross-pollinated crop, it is very difficult to maintain the trueness. Therefore, we always recommend you go for the, uh, the every time you buy the seeds and other things. Again, in case of hybrids, hybrids, we cannot not at all go for the seeds because there is a crossing between male and female and all those things that I think they know. So this is the pro uh, this one, sir. As far as the seed replacement rate is concerned, this is what we are saying. Again, thank you, Professor Prasad, for putting out the uh, uh, the scientific uh, explanation for yes. uh, the pro uh, to, uh, explanation of the problem in the sense that uh, there is no hard and fast rule as to uh, X is better than Y all the time. Yeah. Uh, the situation is different for self-pollinated crops and cross-pollinated crops. Yes. In cross-pollinated crops, uh, it's very difficult to maintain purity. But yes. in self even in self-pollinated crops, it would be difficult to maintain purity beyond two or three years. So yes. you will need some seed, seed replacement to happen yes. Uh, after three, four uh, years, even in self-pollinated seeds. Yes. That's a very important point uh, uh, that uh, you made. Uh, I should now move to some of the uh, questions, uh, uh, some other questions that have come up. Uh, a lot of questions are, are, are related to uh, the new uh, advances in genetic modification and so on. I saw it in some of the yeah, diagrams yeah. that you had prepared. Uh, uh, this uh, genetic modification is one, but then we also now have gene editing uh, techniques. Yes. So one question that has come is, uh, is uh, gene, what is the regulatory situation in India with respect to gene editing? Is it, uh, uh, is it subject to the same regulatory conditions as in the case of GM crops? Or is it outside those regulations? So that is a question uh, that ha has come up. Uh, we would uh, like to have you view. No, no. Actually, the regulations are there for the gene editing and other things. Here, what we do, uh, when we in, in, inculcate some of the traits, then we go for the gene editing and other things. So what is the nature of uh, the, the material or the crops which you are using? So that way it is there. 
but uh, as far as the regulatory is concerned some of the gm crops and other things uh, we have a separate regulations for the routine things we know as such uh, we are using the marker uh, state and gene editing all these uh, advanced tools are using it for the development of the varieties and incorporation of the new traits in the our uh, variety absolutely no problem so we have the system of uh, the policy accordingly we can do it thank you professor prasad uh, the other question uh, uh, is uh, uh, related to uh, seeds and whether the same seed can be used in different agroecological regions that is the one question that has come up so okay. the question is like this are seeds developed territorial in nature okay. that is can they be sown throughout the country or only in particular regions for which they have been developed uh, yeah it's a very good question. You see, we, our India is having a different agroclimatic uh, zones. So that way, we started developing the varieties. We will look at the, you know, the where it is exactly required. Because based on the requirement only, we will fix the objective. So normally, we develop the variety for a specific zones or the region. Sometimes what will happen, some of the varieties, the adaptability for the different situation is also very good and doing best. One example I will quote now, uh, this uh, rice varieties of Telangana and uh, the Andhra Pradesh, they are doing extremely well in the northern you know, states. So especially in Uttar Pradesh, even in Spanga, this is, uh, you know, uh, some of the, I think, uh, the, I forgot the number. Even our variety, hybrid rice KRH2, which we have developed. So that was doing extremely well in the North India. So especially in the Eastern India. So that way, only thing, uh, when we are testing the crops or the varieties, we are testing for the different zones. So we have the data. So when we release those varieties, wherever it has performed well in those zones, we will recommend for the release. Otherwise, we don't take risk at all because sometimes there will be outbreak of some diseases. Maybe it may not give the yield which we are climbing in those zones. So that way, we don't. But normally, what we do before release, we will be testing those material in across the different zones. And based on its performance, we release and recommend. Right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, the other question uh, is about uh, uh, the it's a long question. I'll read it. It's a very yeah, interesting yeah. and long question. I'll read it. Uh, Professor Prasad, thanks for this interesting overview. Uh, the question goes on. In a smallholder setting, the current urgency is to transition from green revolution to evergreen revolution paradigm. Yeah. And that calls for ecological intensification of production practices. Okay. Uh, so the question is, suppose you want in ecological intensification practices like cover cropping, green manuring, ecological engineering, etc., etc. Uh, uh, we need suitable seeds also for uh, this kind of situation, this kind of uh, uh, purpose, uh, uh, so that they will deliver uh, the appropriate ecosystem services in a particular region uh, for a particular uh, situation and uh, to address certain situations also. Uh, so the question is, how could our Indian science make progress in, for example, changing the plant architecture to increase the soil green cover during heat stress regions through cover cropping for conserving soil uh, and so on. So, uh, are we? I think the question is more like: Are we? Uh, are we? Uh, are we formatting the seeds and their genetic structures such as to respond to the requirements of evergreen revolution? Also, that yeah. is the question. I think. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very good question and also very difficult to answer also, but still, still, see, now, uh, as he mentioned, uh, our Indian farmers, uh, more number is uh, about uh, 80, more than 80, 83 percent are small and marginal farmers. The size of holding is uh, less. Now, because of that, what we are doing, sustainability is one important and of course, there is a lot of uh, climate uh, various uh, activities are there. So as a result, we are going for the integrated farming system. So when we are planning and recommending this integrated farming system, one of the main thing which we are in crop diversification. So because they, they are using only the paddy, paddy, ragi, ragi like that. So what we are suggesting, 
so even within this small uh, you know areas you go for the crop diversification where you can fetch more prices at the same time you can protect your soil you see alteration should be there you see for instance if you take on the cereals we are recommending for the go to the pulses and some of the green manure crops uh, probably nowadays nobody is growing for the green manures and other things in a huge scale now is a huge demand for the green now they started so that way what we are trying we are trying to go for some climate resilient uh, varieties and the crops which can be suitable for the wider climatic zones and the wider areas so that way we are promoting the millets we are promoting some of the especially this you know nutri millets uh, these things and also some fodder crops which can you know give the some green manure crops so like this we are blending so that we can restore the you know soil health and also the which can made available to go for the different uh, uh, kind of animals and other things this is what we are promoting in the system sir thank you thank you very much uh, uh, there is another question as to whether there is any proof of concept project uh, on the use of blockchain technology in indian agriculture has has it been shown as successful uh, and and demonstrated so in certain instances in your view yeah yeah, yeah. actually now uh, we have one program with our uh, you know software company pro on uh, some uh, aspects like you know some of the products we are exporting like gherkins and other things so sometimes uh, it will come back due to some uh, quality problem because some of the things you know diseases and uh, the things which is not visible so it will be detected from airport and other things and so somehow we would like to use this kind of technology and uh, started working on this and we have come out with some our entomologist has come out with the technology where it can be detected here itself and uh, so by using these tools so that he can avoid uh, you know packing or loading the uh, the deceased one so like that we started and also another two three companies have come so we would like to work in this direction my idea of this blockchain would like to introduce in the seed system because here there are different stakeholders in the sense uh, starting from the selection of the farmer and the plant is different testing agency is different and buyers are different packing agencies are different so under this system can we take the support of this blockchain system and use it so these are all in the initial trial and also we were also given the project to work on these drones how really identify the off types in the field so that it gives the individual plant true to typeness and uh, these are all the areas which we started but it is in the infant stage sir. thank you uh, thank you very much uh, I, i'm sure it is uh, a, a very uh, traceability and other uh, yeah. other such things become possible when yeah. uh, blockchains and are, are used but it requires a lot more work because yes. uh, in india we largely work in informal context yes. and such technologies are better in formal context so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is always one problem that we have uh, another question is related to the use of self help groups uh, for yeah. knowledge transfer yeah. uh, where a lot of women participate in uh, the effort to produce seeds uh, multiply seeds and so on and so forth uh, uh, are there any specific skill training programs for women in this are these formalized under the national skills mission or something like that that is the main question yes yes thank you so much actually uh, as such we have the directorate of extension not only in our university most of the universities here the main focus seems on the training skill uh, you know development among the uh, different stakeholders so our focus is also on the women in fact uh, yesterday we had a one uh, krishi mela i could see lot of women i was really happy i asked uh, today people are saying backbone of india is farmers i said backbone of uh, agriculture is not uh, the just simply farmer is a woman farmer i said because more than 60% they are working sir in this context uh, my experience in the seed production sir we have developed lot of self help groups to become you know uh, the entrepreneur in the seed productions sir the hybrid seed production with respect to the rice which is happens only in the warangal and uh, karimnagar of uh, uh, hyderabad 
what we did why we should go there say we have the similar kind of environment is there why can't we do it sir we have identified the place near sira and other areas where this self help groups of the women they started working and today just you give them i want uh, so much quantity of the hybrid seeds they are ready starting from planting roguing of the half types pollinations and cleaning grading everything they will attend so this is the kind of uh, the, the entrepreneurship we are developing among the, uh, the this is one example the second one is now we are talking about the secondary agriculture sir many many our kvks have trained many women farmers as an entrepreneur by developing the secondary agriculture that is value added products of the millets and also some of the you know ragi balls so many things sir so some now what they are asking they are asking the market sir we are produce enough you please give us the market that is the kind of confidence uh, the self help groups and the women entrepreneurs have asking us so this is what uh, even now we started even among the fivos so more focus we are giving on the farm uh, the women because they are very committed and uh, they will be very focused so that way we are doing a lot of work on them and we have a lot of success stories sir thank you professor sir uh, another question is related to how to bring uh, how to give international recognition to farmers varieties okay. uh, under the ppvfr act and all we have in uh, the seed sector uh, mm -hmm. there are international regulations also uh, mm -hmm. so how do we how do uh, is there a process by which we uh, 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 suppose you find a farmer's variety which is traditional and which has some special qualities and you want to bring it uh, give it a tag of gi or anything of that sort uh, how do you how do you go about it is the question uh, should they approach yes, the nearest university or or something else sir actually for the international recognitions or this one there is a you know organizations opawa international union plan protection of new plant varieties i think they have to approach so the best uh, the way which they can do it uh, through the ppva for it because their upava guidelines are separate guidelines it is not uh, like our uh, ppva for it of course the basic things are there uh, the guidelines uh, some modifications are there so we have to you know uh strictly they go for the upawa guidelines test the varieties and has to be give the data as per the upawa guidelines and lot of procedures are there they have to pay and as such things i think uh, the ppva fra is the right uh, organization to approach rather than any other thing we also do it but again we do it through that because it is a international uh, the process uh, but uh, that will be done by upawa yes 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 uh, probably the last question uh, we are yeah, yeah. nearing 5:30 uh, uh, what are the latest efforts being made to develop varieties that can withstand predicted impacts of climate change such as increasing thermal and water stress mm -hmm. uh, number one but a related question is also there uh, are there any specific scientific or economic challenges in developing these climate res climate change resilient seed varieties okay yeah actually we have a project also that is you know our uh, crida that is a dry land project wherein our one of the objective is to develop the you know climate resilient varieties uh, that is one objective and also all crop based uh, acrips all india coordinated research project on rice ragi millets then groundnut every every you know acre projects having this objective as one of the mandate so development of the varieties uh, for the climate resilient maybe it is for the drought maybe it is for the flood so like that we are started working and a lot of varieties have been released uh, in each crop by the each uh, directorate and the acrip so that way we have the list of varieties and it is a continuous process we are developing the only thing is uh, we when we start developing these varieties sometimes we have to forego the some of the other aspects like you know yield potentiality may not be to the level of the normal uh, conditions uh, the otherwise uh, we have the varieties which can uh, survive under these situations for the different crops uh, just now one more question has come which is related to and i'll paraphrase that question for you uh, which is 
there's a lot of private research also happening in the seed sector. Uh, yeah. But are you are you concerned in any way about the growth of private sector at the expense of the public sector uh, uh, yeah. in the in the area of seed research? Uh, will will research in the private sector be confined? To only those areas where more profits are available. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, uh, what what would be your view on that? Yes, sir, actually, see when it comes to the seed sector and the seed industry, earlier the contribution of the seed sector by the public sector it was more than 60-65 percent about uh, uh, four or five years back. Now it is going in the other trend that is now the contribution of the private is almost 52 to 53 percent and the rest is the public sector here the main focus of course is on the everybody want to make money so here there's a, a commitment on part of the government the public sector the major crops like paddy wheat ragi groundnut so these soya beans so some of the voluminous crops you know, these crops normally not touched by this private sector earlier, but now they started. So, but now as a mandatory, so we have to address these, uh, you know, crops by the public sector, which was not taken by the private sector in large scale. So that's why we are doing it. As far as the research is concerned, we are also doing both way, but they, the private sectors, wherever, like, you know, hybrids in some crops, vegetables, wherever the incomes are there, high value crops, they are focusing more and we are focusing this. So this is what, uh, they, but uh, nevertheless, we are also working on the same line of uh, the vegetables and other crops also, but our participation is little bit, uh, not to the extent of the private side. But uh, the research and other focus is going on on both the crops, more on these, uh, the field crops, which are the mandatory crops as far as the food security is concerned. Thank you very much, Professor Prasad. I'm sure you will join me in uh, saying that uh, we need uh, more uh, encouragement and investment in public sector agricultural yeah. research because that would be uh, uh, more yeah. certainly more pro pharma. Uh, yes, yes, uh, it is. It is needed <laughs> actually. Nowadays, yes. uh, the investment on uh, you know R and D innovation. Uh, I don't know whether I to say or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but we, we all know that the investment yeah, is, is stagnating. It is not rising. And uh, uh, the luckily, government, all governments need to invest more in yeah, public yeah. agricultural research. So luckily, we are getting a lot of projects by writing projects with uh, some uh, you know other funding agency. Yes. That is how we are surviving and doing some good job. Thank you. Uh, Professor Prasad, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank for, you. Uh, for yeah. uh, engaging us with this very difficult topic. But you... But you <laughs> Uh, traversed it with great ease, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the questions that you answered uh, uh, answers uh, is a response to many uh, many doubts that exist uh, yeah. in the public domain as to uh, whether uh, whether saving seeds is good or bad, uh, yes. whether storing in situ or ex situ is good or bad. Uh, yeah. You know, all these things you provided very clear answers as mm -hmm. to uh, what the. Uh, scientific approach to these issues are. Thank you very much for that. Uh, mm -hmm. But I should leave the official vote of thanks to the organizers. So I should, <laughs> First uh, of all, I would like to thank, I don't know, because I was busy so many things, I could not able to concentrate on much of my work. No, it was a fascinating lecture. It <laughs> yeah, was a yeah. truly fascinating lecture. Thank really you very much. Uh, well, I, I should pass on, uh, pass on the uh, chair uh, I mean, pass on as there's no mic here, so usually we say we pass yeah, on the yeah. mic. But yeah. now I'll pass on the screen to Dr. Sandeep and Bakshi uh, to conclude the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nihira, would you take up? Yes. Uh, th thank you, everyone, for attending the first session in our lecture series on science and technology in agriculture in India. This is part of our four week lecture series. Uh, we will have a one week break next week. I just want to remind everyone of that. Um, I would like to thank the online events team at the Foundation for Agrarian Studies for putting together in collaboration with Rosa Luxemburg Street to South Asia um, for organizing this series. 
Um, I would like to thank our director, Dr. Sandeepan Bakshi and Tapas Modak, uh, the lead coordinator of this series. Um, I would like to thank Dr. Uh, uh, Professor R. Ram Kumar for agreeing to chair uh, and moderating this session. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in other lectures as well. And I would like to finally thank uh, Dr. Rajendra Prasad for agreeing to uh, initiate our lecture series um, with a really interesting presentation. Thank you, sir. And uh, we, we really uh, thank you for engaging with all the questions that you received too. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. And with this, we conclude the first lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you again sometime. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So we would soon get back to the physical workshop mode and we would see each other sure, again. Sure, sure, sure. Sir. Huh? Yeah. Sure. Sure. Sir. Thank you everyone. I'll be ending the webinar now. Yeah.